This is the continuation of example one. So taking the Thevenin, looking at finding VTH and then finding RTH. So to find VTH, there's no current in this floating wire. So all the current goes through. So taking a loop from the top because we don't know the drop on the bottom is plus 10 plus 1 milli 1 times 1k. Then there's no drop here, plus 5, and that's equal to VTH. So solving that gives us a VTH of a plus 16 volts. To find RTH, the equivalent path from this node to ground needs to be taken. There's only independent sources in this circuit. So for voltages, change them to a wire. And for current sources, open them. So this becomes a wire here. This becomes a wire to ground there. And this is open. So taking a path, I start at the place I want to go to ground. I go through here. I notice there's a split. So this would be 4K plus these two in parallel, except that this does not go through to a pathway to ground. So it's just a floating wire and does not contribute to RTH. So 4K plus 1K is RTH. So 5K. So now this whole circuit can be replaced by that equivalent and connected at the place I had disconnected. With the VTH value of 16 volts and this is 5K. Now the current going through this because it is the similar characteristics. This is now IB and this point is VB. All right, now solving for the currents. Always take a loop from the base through to the emitter. We know that there's a 0 0.7 drop between VBE. So the loop goes from plus 16, and then this is plus to minus, so minus. IB times 5K minus 0.7 and then this is plus to minus so minus IE times 2K then minus 2 again the current here is plus to minus that was 10 volts so minus 2 minus 2K times IE, and then a plus 10. And that's all equal to zero. Now the relationship between IB and IE needs to be used. And IB is equal to IE over beta plus one. Using this equation with that equation, substituting in IB gives you one equation for IE. So combining all the voltages gives 23.3 volts divided by the 5K. Beta was given as 50, so over 51, beta plus 1, plus 4K. And that equals IE, which gives 5.7 milli. So IE here is 5.7 milli. Now from this going back you can get IB which is going to be 5.7 milli over 51 which is approximately 111 microamps. So IB here is 111 microamps. IC is also related, so IC 
can be found either by the summation of these two currents with this one or by using beta IB, which will be 50 times the 111 micro and gives approximately 5.6 milliamps. So this ends up being 5.6 milliamps. So now to find the voltages, either you can start down here, get VE and then add on 0.7, or go from the top and get VB and then take away 0.7, either direction. I'm going to go this direction, so I'm going to go plus 16, and then the minus 5K times IB, and that's going to be equal to VB. So plugging in those values gives a VB of 5.4 volts and VE is 0.7 less than that. So we have 4.7 volts for VE. Then VC, or VO, is 10 minus IC times 500, where IC is the 5.6 milli. So this gives a VO, which is approximately 10 volts. So now to check that our assumption that it is in the active region, VC needs to be greater than VB for that to be true. In this case, 10 is greater than 5.4, and therefore our assumption is correct. Another part of this problem is if you're given the gain VO over the input Vsig, recall that Vsig was attached here at the base as 3K and this was Vsig. So knowing and having that given as 5 volts per volt, also given Vsig is 1 milli or 5 plus 1 milli sine omega t. The DC part of it gets blocked by the capacitor, so the only part of the signal that goes through is the AC portion, and that's what's seen here. So this is the only thing that gets amplified. V out, knowing this gain, all I have to do is multiply this by this. So V out AC is going to be the DC, or the five times one milli, so five milli sine omega t. The total instantaneous voltage is going to be the combination of the DC plus the AC. In this case, the DC is 10, and this AC is the 5 milli sine omega t. To sketch this, So the signal that would be seen here if I was to sketch this now a rough sketch is that I'm going to have a big DC offset meaning that the sinusoid is going to originate around 10 volts. So it's going to look like this on the oscilloscope, and this would be 10.005, 
and this would be 9.995. So it's just, you know, 5 milli on each side. And that concludes example one.